This video was more for the people who are subscribed who are trying to watch the journey of me build the dreadnought. So this is sort of like a chapter in that diary. Okay, before I go too much farther, I'm going to have to paint that axle housing. So I'm gonna wire wheel it and get it all cleaned up and then paint it. But before I do any of that jazz, this has to be cleaned. Now that all the arduous prep work is done, let's paint. New cast, cast iron in all of its beautiful glory. I wonder if you can see that beautiful silver metal flake in there. I also wanted to show you the axle housing. Now that it's had a second to dry a little bit and become a little less splotchy. It's turning out so gorgeous. You can see in some of like the cracks and crevices around in there, it's still glossy. And that's because the paint's still a little wet in those spots. But uh, overall, man, I think that that satin is a really nice color for an axle housing. This is the wheel hub from the Ford 10.5 and I was checking out the bearings on this to see if I can reuse them. The front of one is okay, the front of this one is not. So we're, we're uh, going to have to replace at least one bearing. Now I'm going to pull the, what's left of these goofy seals, if I can, see how I can pull them. And I'm going to pull these back bearings and see what's left of them. solved your little mystery. Ow! 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 Owie! Ooh. A lot of this looks good, but I'm seeing rust over here. And I'm not sure how big of a deal rust is. It might not be a big deal at all. Bust out the old phone. I don't know, if, I don't think you can see it, but all along in here there's a little bit of surface rust. And I'm not sure if that is a huge deal. I can't feel it with my fingernail. And I don't feel, well, I don't feel anything with my fingernail when I run it along in here. Hmm, I don't know. I do not have a definitive answer at this time. I'll have to look into what the cost is on these bearings, but I think it's $50 to $75 a wheel to do. And uh, these look like they probably will last. I mean, they feel fine. I don't feel anything goofy. All right, this is the other hub. And this hub, the front bearing was in pretty good shape. And actually, actually it was in great shape, so. Let's see what the rear bearing is. Maybe I'll just do the bearings in that one hub and leave this one. I'm gonna kill myself. Keep your eye on the ball, man. See how it feels. This one feels glass smooth. I'm not even gonna wipe it down. But it feels excellent. Let's just wipe the race down and look at it only. Yeah, I think this truck sat 
in the weather or something for a while, or outside, or in a stream, maybe. Because the ring and pinion out of the 10.5 was rusty. The bearings in the rear end were rusty. Yeah, this bearing is in excellent shape. It just looks like a good quality race. So, huzzah, we only have to do bearings in one of the hubs. This is uh, the rusty hub, the rusty race hub. Also, I threw both of those races over my head for those bearings. Sheesh. I threw both of those seals over my shoulder and they landed right there next to each other. How cool is that? It's the little things, you know. One race. Okay, there's my race. This reminds me of the LS block. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to clean and paint this whole damn block. But then, once I got in it, it had this really pretty black like epoxy coating, and then it was fine. And I think, yeah, even this flange, still pretty in black, just needs a good cleaning. Cool, well I don't have to paint this. Yeah, this bigger one is the rear race. So I'll clean it up real quick, give it a quick w wipe, and then show you what I was seeing if you didn't see it on that first try. Look at all that rust. Go for a stop recording. <sighs> well, the cat, uh, one of our cats, uh, fell into a box apparently and got super scared about it and popped out of the box and landed on my child's neck and clawed my kid's neck up real good. So, that's nice. So this is the one that was behind the seal, or yeah, right behind the seal. Now this race is really bad. It's got a lot of that rust in it. And again, you can't feel it at all. But it didn't feel smooth when I spun the bearing in it, really. I mean, it felt kind of smooth, but not that glossy glass smooth that bearings are supposed to feel like. So that's why I'm getting rid of these. For my next trick, I'm going to take this backing plate that belongs to the 10.5 and I'm going to push these studs out, hopefully thereby freeing this dust shield. Now I unbent these dust shields the other day and uh, that's all well and good, but I'm thinking now, uh, I'm kind of rethinking now that what I might do instead is uh, just remove the dust shield altogether and then just have the disc brake exposed. I mean, it is a rock crawler, not a grandpa truck, so... That's a pretty meaty stud. It doesn't want to just come off. Okay, I pulled, just this guy just pulls right out of this rubber boot and then this rubber boot just pops right out of the dust shield. And now I'm going to just give this a few love taps this way on that ring I was talking about. Oh, well, there you have it. All right. So what I think what I'm going to do is just cut this off. And uh, I've got all of my, my uh, shielding on the Jeep, and it looks okay. But uh, I don't know. I've never seen like brake shielding on a hardcore rock crawler, so I think I'm just going to be like the cool kids and cut this off. with a, I'll just use one of those uh, thin cutoff wheels. Okay, here we go. 
Never mind. False alarm. Okay, backing plate's gone. Here's my, uh, yeah, one of those metal things hit me right here, and I think it's gonna leave a welt. Um, anyway, this is what your uh, decluttered, trimmed down, what the hell is the word I'm looking for? This is your D dust shielded doodah, whatever, I'm done. I think all I'm gonna do is give it one of these. just to get the dirt and the grime off. I'm just gonna give this a real quick wire brush too. Because I didn't show it on the last one, this is kind of basically what I did. Just kind of just grab this rubber thing and just kind of work this guy through it like that. And you can just kind of Peel this out of that little groove and there you have it. Here is another de-shielded backing plate, ready to rock and roll. Well, I painted both parts, even though this has some black on it, I painted it anyway. And uh, I'm gonna now push them back together with these studs and then I'm going to stick the, the assembly on the axle behind me and at least get some backing plates. At least get one step closer to getting something done. Take it over here and stick it on the axle. Let me see if I can muscle this on here. It's pretty heavy. Oh, sheesh. Oh, come on. Oh. Lordy mama. Sayonara, back. Good and tight. My favorite German torque spec. Okay, this one's wrestled on, and while you weren't watching, I wrestled the other side on. Now, if you can see, I've got a big mess of, uh, there, move my fat leg. I got a big mess of e-brake parts here, and now we gotta figure out how all this goes back together. Fortunately, I have the power of the internet. Cool. There is the e-brake. Now I'm ready to install a hub. But since I'm here looking at the end of this and it doesn't look that charming, I'm gonna just give it a quick wipe. Also, I've been trying to wear gloves more when I'm playing with chemicals, because I actually want to be around to see my kids grow up. Here's my hub that had the good bearings in it. I just used that to keep everything safe while I was whacking away at a bunch of grinding. All right, Timkin, so you know I did it right. And uh, so crazy. Anyway, should be able to just hammer that on. Oh, dang it, dang it, all right, let me work this seal back off, everything seems fine, so back together she goes, okay, 
now we're back where we're supposed to be. Okay, here's the big moment. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna get it started, and then I'm going to take this front bearing, well, let's do that. I'm gonna take this front bearing and put it on. And then I'm just going to take this nut and get it started anyway. I don't buy many special tools, but uh, sometimes it is nice to just get the right special tool. So what is 65 times 12? 780. Let's cook this thing up to 780. Let's take this big breaker bar and let's count eight clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it's a couple days later now, and I've taken this axle shaft here, and I cleaned it up real good with a wire wheel because it was scuzzy, and I've got a brand new O-ring here for it. These O-rings just go on a guide right back here, and I've got it slid into the axle. I saved you all the boring stuff like all the cleaning, but I am going to do this last little bit of cleaning out of this guide, because this guide is yucky. I'm going to give that o-ring the tiniest little splash of oil. I don't want it seeping out or nothing, but I don't want it to go in dry and tear. sure hope I have the right side. Cool. Now it's kind of up on there. Now we got to just get that o-ring popped in and just is all it takes. All right, I've given each one of these a nice little spray down with some uh, of this junk, this brake cleaner. And now I'm going to assemble them and I'm gonna add some Loctite. All right, bingo. All right, this is the hub that I pulled the bearings out of because they were bad. So I finally have new bearings. I had to wait like three weeks for them. You can see these little nicks right here. Those are from the punch where I was punching from the backside into that race to get it to come out like that. And um, I've got to take care of those little nicks, otherwise they'll keep the race from sitting all the way down. I think you can see that uh, beveled edge in here, just that last little bit of bevel. As you're doing it, all those little high spots totally show themselves when you... Okay, okay, I got it. You don't want to go too far because the, the race has to sit on this shoulder, of course. But that's sort of a quick idea of how to clean up those little burrs that might be left behind. Of course, we have to spray this out again real quick, but it's just a quick spray. All right, these are all the bearings and races I need. Here's the inner race, inner bearing, and outer bearing and race combination. This is like 15 bucks, and these are way more expensive than that. So it's kind of funny. All right, in order to shove this race in, uh, the groove it sits in is actually quite a bit deeper than the race is tall. So I took the old race, and I think you've seen me do this trick once before, cut it, and then just polish it up so there's no burrs, set it upside down, and now that becomes your driver, 
you can beat on this and dent it in or whatever or smash it up and then when you're done it just pulls out because there's no stress left in it but I also did the one for the front so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna beat this race in I should mention that if you're cutting these with an angle grinder which is pretty much the only way to do it that there might be some tendency in this material to go once you cut through it and it'll pinch the disc so you want to make sure you use this face guard in case it actually grabs the disc and it ruptures it doesn't send shrapnel in your face I have nothing that'll fit in here nicely I've got this seal driver kit hiding over here but so that's handy we're just gonna take this now and just walk around See the magic of that? It just pops right out. So let's just flip it over and do this smaller one. I believe I have a seal driver that'll work on this this time. Yes indeed, I do. How exciting. Okay, here's the inner bearing. And I'm just gonna swab a little of this trusty gear lube on it. You never want to run these dry, and sometimes, if you're not careful, the lubrication from your axle housing won't make it this far before you drive. So to prevent you accidentally doing that, add a little lubrication before you put it in, and then there's just no reason to worry. Now we have the seal. And I just love the way these two-part seals work. That way you don't wind up with a bad seal surface from a seal wearing it out. You just always have a guaranteed factory new seal surface when you do the seal. It makes too much sense. Okay, that's the seal on. We're quickly amassing tools all around me in here. Okay, we'll flip this upside down. And, uh... We probably could wait to do this, but I'm just going to put it in now. Well, I was all the way done installing, and then I realized the oil slinger wasn't in, and that goes under the seal, so I still pooched it. Ah. All right, I have finished the rear end. It has everything. Everything is done. This is my rock crawler rear end for the Durango. We've got Ford 10.5. We've got zip locker by Yukon. We've got 538 gears by USA Standard. I have the standard brake stuff that came with it. I'm gonna do like an R1 Concepts or a Power Stop brakes eventually. So that's why this stock junkie stuff is still on. But here we are. A finished rear end. For those of you that have been following along on this story, this story, at least until I start putting links on it, has just come to an end. This video was more for the people who are subscribed who are trying to watch the journey of me build the Dreadnought. So this is sort of like a chapter in that diary. But anyway, I'm Daniel with Aired Down. I'm building a rock crawler, it's a Durango. And in the meantime, I'm wheeling a rock crawler, which is a CJ5. See it out there. And until next time, I'll see you later. Peace out. Go rock crawling. Bye bye.